hear that in Christian church all the time? And who does it actually mean? Let's get that out of the Bible. Because you heard that before. A lot of people say they say, right? What do you think it means? Just saved, like, like protected. protected, right? So, would you consider yourself being saved right now? Like, oh, I'm saved, I've been baptized. Would you consider yourself saved? Yeah. You say, yeah? Wait, I'm going to read something out the Bible. You believe in the Bible, sis? Yeah. Right. Sure. How you say, some ways, it, like, what parts that are kind of shaking to you? Um, that's just, that's a lot of parts. Okay, so I'm going to read a few things. If you disagree at any moment, feel free to be like, oh wait, actually that doesn't sound right to me, all right? Because what we have to do, hold that Acts 5 between us. So when we come together, you know what I'm saying, because you know we're God's chosen people, right? When we come together and talk about God, we gotta do it in a certain way. Yeah. We gotta understand to let our feelings go and believe on who? On God's words, right? right? Read this. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. We can, we can agree on that. Let's believe what God says compared to what each and every man thinks in our own mind, right? That's fair. How you doing, brother? Right. We're going over how to be saved and what's it mean to be saved, right? So we just read a scripture. I want you to see if you agree with the scripture real quick. So read that again. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Uh -huh. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. We can agree on that. Let's believe what God, his word says, compared to what each and every man feels and what they own think, right? So we're going over being saved. Have you ever heard someone say they're saved before? Or, you, you, you know, do you believe that you're saved? Right? Let's go to Luke chapter 1 verse 68. So we're about to read about the state of being saved, right? Christian church say if you're baptized, if you believe, you're saved, right? They say all these types of things, but let's hear it out the Bible, what it actually means to you, because we all want to be saved, right? Read this. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Wait, who is he the God of? God of Israel. So the God that's in the New Testament, he says he's the God of Israel. Yeah. Right? He didn't say the God of the whole entire world, right? He says Israel. We, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Whose people? His people. That sounds like a possessive word. Right? God of Israel is visiting and redeeming his people. Not all people. He's saying his people. You can clearly read that, right? Read on. Read on. And have raised up an horn of salvation. A leader for them. For us in the house of his servant David. He says for us in the house of his servant David. David was what? An Israelite. Right. right. Yeah. From the tribe of Judah. That's right. So if y'all take a look at this sign right here, you see the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. All right? And you see these 12 tribes right here, right? So what do y'all see yourself in this sign? All right? Do y'all consider yourself African American? What, what is your father, sister? What, do you, what is your father's na uh, race, nationality? What is your father's? Huh? No, no, your, your actual, father. yeah, your actual earthly father. What was, was he an African American? Was he a Jamaican? He's black, okay. So you would be considered from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Earthly, right? You would be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. So you fit what God talking about, who he's going to redeem and send right. more for, right? A leader. So let's re read that. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, which have been since the world began. All from Genesis up until Revelation, the prophets have been speaking about God saving his people. That's right. Read. That we should be saved. That we should be what? Saved from our enemies. That's right. God says to be saved. You have to be saved from your enemies. That's right. All right? Question. Right, so during this time, right, uh, what was going on in, to us as a nation of people? Right, our forefathers, our foremothers came here on slave ships, all right? Would you consider your friends doing this to you or some form of enemies? You know, the enemies. Your enemies, right? Let's read this in the Bible. Picture plain that this is actually in the Bible. A lot of people don't believe, they believe this just happened out of, out of nowhere. No, nah, God prophesied this right. in the Bible to happen to who? His people. Not that everybody go through shackles and chains, losing their heritage, calling themselves a, a description of a color like black, or two separate continents. That doesn't happen to everybody. You ask a Chinese person what their nationality is. Yep. I'm Chinese. My last name is Ken Marjan. You know what I'm saying? You ask an Indian, they know I'm from India. You know what I'm saying? I'm a food. You know what I'm saying? All these different types of things. We don't know who we are. Right. We just say we're a continent. We're African. 
We don't know which country in Africa, you know what I'm saying? And today, family, the Bible's gonna let you know the truth about who you are That's and right. what we must do. All right. right, read that, Deuteronomy 28, 15. You know, book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, he said, what was it? read that again. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken. So that's the first action. It says, and this is going to happen to these people if they didn't hearken. They had to hearken and do something. Read. Right. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You had to listen to God. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. We had to hearken to do his commandments. But he says we did not do his commandments. You know what? And his statues which I command thee this day. What was going to happen to those people? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Would you look at this and say this is a curse to a nation? Because it didn't, this didn't happen to a few of us. Right. This happened to our entire, hundreds of millions of us came here in these conditions. That's right. But why? We just read it because we didn't hearken to what? God's commandments. Yeah, we didn't hearken to God's commandments. Because why? All right, you guys familiar with Moses? Have y'all heard of Moses before? You heard the name? All right, what, what was significant about him? Y'all know anything significant about Give me a little, little bit about what you know. It's okay if you don't know. You know what I'm saying? So what do you know a little bit about Moses? A little bit? Okay. So I'm going I'm to I'm bring you up a little bit. So you know a little bit about Moses? Maybe if it's Right. So Moses, he, when he was growing up, he grew up in Egypt. In Egypt. At that time, Egypt was well, similar to America. How America is the number one power of the world? During that time, Egypt was the superpower of the Eastern Hemisphere. Right. It was like America on that side, right? So he grew up, right, as an Egyptian, but he was an Egyptian himself. Exodus 11 and 7. No. He was an Egyptian himself, and it's important to know, because a lot of our people think just because we have the same color as somebody, we're the same as them. That is not right. That's, That's why I ask who your father is. Right. Because it's all according to your seed. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with none of that. It's about the who your father is, what seed do they come from. Because in Genesis, it brings up the beginning of nations, the progenitors of different nations, right? right. And there's only one chosen seed. And we're going to get who they are, right? Read that. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel huh? shall not a dog Move his tongue. God says nothing on this earth should go against the children of Israel. Right. We are the apple of his eye. We're his favorite people on this planet, right? right. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read on. Against man or beast, uh -huh. that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. God put a difference between the Egyptians, which were Africans at the time, and the Israelites, right? So they're not the same people. So right. Africa. Egypt is in Africa, quote unquote Africa, right? We know they are considered Africans. They are dark people as well. But there's a difference between the Negro who came here on slave ships and the Africans. That's all I'm trying to point to. Like, hold on, we're not the same people, right? So Moses grew up in that society. He, you know, he was next to Pharaoh in power, you know what I'm saying? But he left, right, to save his people. Right? Once he rescued his people, they became a nation. The Israelites that were enslaved, he rescued them, and then they went into the wilderness through the uh, through the Red Sea. You, know, you heard that story, the Red Sea parts, yeah. and that nation people walk through. Those people are the Israelites. Yeah. Deuteronomy 7 6. You know? Those people are the Israelites. And God feels a certain way about them. He rescued them from Egypt, aka on the title of America. Alright? But how does he feel about those people? Alright? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy means to be separate. We are separate from the rest of the world. Read on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee uh -huh. to be a special people unto himself. A chosen special people unto himself. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God says the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites, are above all people that are upon the face of this earth. That's right. right. Are they teaching that in the Christian church? No, because the pastor will have some explaining. If he ever read this in church, he has some explaining to do. That's to the right. white man sitting in this congregation, to the Chinese person sitting, to the East yep. Indian man, he has some explaining to do. But that's where they lie. They rob our people with tithes and all these different things to keep them sleep from the truth of the Bible. That's right. That we are the Israelites. And that we came here because we broke God's commandments. Right. Right. right now we have to serve our sins. All right, since we came here for breaking God's commandments, how do we get up out of this place? What do you think we must do? Abide by his commandments. 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John 5 and 3. Because 
if we got here for breaking his commandments and our God is just, he's going to show grace play. I need you to get yourself together and learn my commandments so I can get you up out of here and then you can rule the world once again. All right? Let's see this. Do y'all love God? You say yes? You say with all your heart, right? Hold that first Samuel 2 and 3. Like we said, like we read earlier, y'all, um, we want to believe what God says rather than how we feel. Right. Right? I ask y'all a question. A lot of people say yes. You know what I'm saying? Because it's what we've been taught. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you were born here and raised up here, you have we have been indoctrinated. We have taught, we have, you know what I'm saying? You guys recognize this image right here, right? Who does the world say that is? They say that's you. So we have been successfully indoctrinated. You bring one of your kids up here, one of your nieces and nephews, and you point to this image, they're going to proudly say that's Jesus Christ. Right. So we know we've been successfully indoctrinated, destroyed. But this is what God says you know. about our word contrary to knowledge and actions. Read that. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. You know. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of their mouth. So God is saying, as a people, we got to stop just using big boastful words. All right? And he says, we have to stop thinking like our words are important. But what is important? Read on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. He says, what is weighed? Actions are weighed. God says, if you know better, you must what? Do better. That's right. You must actually show actions to do better. All right, so I asked the question, do you love God? First John 5 and 3. Let's see exactly how God says for you how to love him. Not how we feel how to love God. You know what I'm saying? We can't give him a hug. We can't send him an email. No. He says, I, the way you're supposed to love me is how I told you to love me. Read that. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. So we're about to read exactly what the love of God is. Read on. That we keep his commandment. That we do what? Keep his commandments. So how do we love God? That's we read right. Second John 6. We have to keep his commandments. But the thing is, are they teaching the commandments in the churches today? You know. I, you know what I'm saying? I can name, like, for instance, what's today? What's, what's, is there anything significant about today? Is it like some old holiday? Is it something going on? Just an ordinary day, right? That's what I'm saying. Actually, today is one of God's holidays. That's right. right. It's actually one of God's holidays, right? It's, but it's a holiday we must we must keep. It's actually, you know, how you guys talking about the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Go ahead, sister. That's right, so there's actually more than 10. So there's 10 main ones, and there's statutes and commandments that go in ordinance and fall in between. Well, we have to follow all of them that God tells us to come to our own. Because there's some that they had in the Old Testament, such as killing lambs and bulls and goats for atonement for sins, compared to what Christ done, he, what he's done, he replaced all those sacrifices. He was the ultimate, and now we just gotta keep the laws. We don't have to do no more sacrifices, kill it, dance, you know what I'm saying, because that, that's done away with. Now we just gotta worship and keep God's commandments. Right. All right, so going back to the Ten Commandments, y'all heard of the Ten Commandments before, right? Do y'all believe y'all keeping all the Ten Commandments? You say not all. That's serious, because a lot of people believe they are. The Ten Commandments, those are heavy. We know the Ten are important. We know the Ten are important, right? So if you're not keeping the Ten, you think you're going to get into heaven? You know. That's how serious it is. Right. The churches are leading our people astray. Right. We're not even keeping the Ten Commandments, and I'm going to prove it to you. Exodus 20, verse 8. Read it up. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Come on. Remember the Sabbath day. The Fourth Commandment says to do what? Remember the Sabbath day. God says the Fourth Commandment, you need to remember his Sabbath day. Right. What is the Sabbath? Family? I don't know. You know? You see what I'm saying? We have been, we have lost our heritage. Why? Why do we lose our heritage? Why do they make us change our names? Call us up African and Negro? Why do they do that to us? For the God. That is exactly right. And what you see today, the Spirit of the Lord is back on this earth. And you're seeing your true pastor, your, your true leaders, who you must follow to get back to God. Right. Because we're going to read to you everything out the Bible. I'm not coming out here with my own words, my emotional, motivational speeches. I'm reading to you the words that the Father said down. That's right. All right, read that again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we must remember the Sabbath day, and there's an action behind it. Keeping it holy. Right. So let's learn how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Bring it up. So I want you guys to, from here to walk forward like, I know I'm not black, I'm not African American. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Yeah, that's right. And I must keep God's commandments. And I learned a few commandments today. All right, let's read about the fourth one. Read, 
Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So God gave us six days and a seven day week period to do all the work that we need to keep our, a roof over our head, clothes on our back, and food on our table. So he gave us six days to do all of that, right? Read. But the seventh day. But which day? The seventh day uh -huh. is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. That seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord. That's right. Is that a Sabbath to yourself? No. It's a Sabbath to God. That's right. So you, God has said, I command you to worship me every Sabbath day from the day that you were born. Right. That's what he just told us. Every From the day that you were born, you put a servant. How you doing, sister? We're going over the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath day, right? So, when we, so a lot of our people don't know about the fourth commandment, right? So, hey, hey family, come closer. Come on, family. Here, come closer. Come closer. Right? So we'll be going over. Hey, family, y'all heard of the Sabbath day? Yeah, yeah, the Sabbath day. Yeah. So we're going over the Sabbath day and how to keep it holy, right? Read that again. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So on that Sabbath day, we are not supposed to be working. So that's the day we must not work. So you all know which day of the week is the Sabbath day? You say Sunday? You say Sunday? You all know which day of the week is the Sabbath day? You say Saturday. All oh, praises, family. If you look at a calendar now, always on the left hand column, which day is on the Sabbath? When you have seven days of the week, which day is all the way on the left? Sunday. It's Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So you have Sunday. What's all the way to the right? What day is that? Saturday. That's right. So Saturday is the seventh day of the week. That's right. That's. You got a question about that? So we, so we hear it. You have six days, you have Sunday through Friday, do everything you must do to get ready for what? The seventh day. Because it's a commandment to keep this day holy, which is today. You're supposed to be, to every, yeah, every Sabbath day is a holiday. So you must, there's certain things you must do to keep this holiday. So there's stipulations and things you must do. All right, so we learned the first thing, we cannot work. You're not supposed to be working today. What else should we do? Exodus 16 to verse 23. Bring it up. Read that. Nope. Exodus chapter 16 to verse 23. Huh? And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord have said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So in this instance, it's Friday. It's before Saturday. So there's, so he's saying, all right, to prepare for this, to, what they're doing is preparing. What are they preparing for? Read on. Bake that which you will bake today. Huh? And see that you will see. Let's talk about food. Bake the food on Friday. Boil and prepare the food on Friday. Why? Read. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Why? Is that it? Yes, sir. Right. So it's saying, the day before the Sabbath, but the day you cook, I mean, the day you prepare your food. Why is he saying that? Exodus 34. Say what? There's things you must do, but we're talking about food particularly, right? He said, Friday, the day before, you want to cook. Get your food ready for what? Exodus 35 and 3. You know? Exodus chapter 35 verse 3. Come on. Ye shall kindle no fire. You should do what? Kindle no fire uh -huh. throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. God says you are not supposed to be cooking today. That's right. There is no frying yes. up, no, mar no, micro no microwaves, none of that. There is no cooking <laughs> on today's day. Amen. You are supposed to That's what? Today. Not work today, and you're not supposed to be cooking today. Right. All right? So y'all yeah. all agree with that, right? This is what yeah. the Bible says. And I there's more, man. Oh, yeah. There's more. Hey, Nehemiah 10. Yeah. Right there. There's more about today because it's God's holiday. It is the fourth commandment. You must learn to keep this day holy. Right. We have to as a nation of people. If you see yourself in this sign, you, you are an Israelite. You're not, you're not black, African-American, African you're not Haitian, you're not Jamaican. You are the Israelites. Right, right. They fed us those names to keep us away from our God. Right. This is what God calls us. Don't let, don't keep that name that your oppressor calls you. All right. But this is another thing. Another way you must keep the Sabbath day holy is this. Read that. Nehemiah chapter ten verse thirty one. You know. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day, on which day? The Sabbath day. So God is saying, if the people of the land, so we're scattering our captivity. So he's saying, and where you are, if people set up uh, any uh, victuals, Wendy's is a victual. Piggly Wiggly is a victual. Right. Gas is a victual. He said, right. they started setting up these places to sell on the Sabbath day. Read. To sell that we would not buy it of them when? on the Sabbath. So are we supposed to be doing business transactions today? No. We are not supposed to be buying or selling on the Sabbath day. That's right. 
That's plain, right? We should not be buying or selling, no cooking, right? And we're not supposed to, um, uh, and we're not supposed to work. And we're not supposed to work. But just, you know, so we hear what we're not supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to just stay at home and sleep all day? Yes. Say what? Sir. We gotta serve him. How do we do that? What kind of action do we need to do this to show God we're serving? Say pray. All the same. What do y'all say? How do we? What are we? What are we supposed to do on the Sabbath day to serve him? Honoring his word. You say go in his word. Serving is love. Serving. All right. Let's get. Let's get. You got it. Read that. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 3. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. It's a what? Holy convocation. What is a holy convocation? That is a holy gathering. You just gather with those in the, in the household or who are you supposed to gather with? You're supposed to gather with those with the same mind as you, who are serving the same God as you. Why? Why is that? Uh, Isaiah 1 and 3. This is a prophecy, right? Now, so what is what is your nationality, I would ask? So what's your... Got it. Okay, cool. So you, you know what I'm saying? You guys are like the first generation here or... Wait, one more, one more second. We're about to go over this real quick. We gotta kill this real quick and then I'll let you go, sis. Revelation 1.14. Because I asked earlier, you know what I'm saying? We have been, been we have been destroyed. We forgot who we are. We don't know where God's chosen people, right? I'm pretty sure in Ghana they have this picture everywhere. Right? They have this picture. This is supposed to be Jesus, right? They try to say this is Jesus. But there's one thing that they hold on. First John 4 and 2. Bring it up. Because a lot of people be like, it's not important to know what he looks like. It's just a color, he's just a man, right? A lot of people might say that, they might think that. It's not, it doesn't matter. It's about the message. Bro, let's believe what God says rather than how we feel. Read that. First John chapter 4, verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. That's how you know if someone's dealing in the Spirit of God. Read. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They have to do what? Confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You have to confess that Jesus came in the flesh. Right. What color was he? What nationality was he? What was his message? That's confession in the flesh. So by those people who don't believe that color is important, the Bible says you're not rolling in the spirit of God if you don't admit these things. You must oh, confess. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I know Jesus was what? He was not a white man. Jesus Christ was a black man. How? Revelation 1 and 14. How do we know that Jesus Christ was a dark-skinned black man? The Bible has a description of it. It's been there this entire time. The thing is, they didn't even try to hide the lie from me. It's just they knew we weren't going to read the Bible. They knew we were just going to believe in our false pastors. Pastors are taught by who? Our oppressors. The same people who look like him, that's what teaches our pastors to teach the people. That's lies. Read that. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Come on. His head and his... Let's go to verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the last book of the Bible. There needs, and it's the first verse says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why does it need to start with the revealing of what Christ's appearance is? Because the whole world... Huh? To let us know. Because the whole world was deceived by this image right here. If you are believing that is your Lord and Savior, you have been deceived. And you, the thing is, if you believe in that, that's the image of the beast. It talks about if you believe and subscribe to his doctrine, you will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. That's, right. that's why we're coming out here with urgency to let our people know what we must do. You must confess he came in the flesh. What was his flesh looking like? Get yeah, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Come on. His head and his hair were white like wool. So we had white woolly hair. Who on this planet Earth has woolly hair? We do. That's, that's right. how you know he's not a white man. They have him straight dog hair. Right. Yeah. They didn't try to hide it. It's right. not white. They get, you know what I'm saying? That's how they know. They are the liars of the earth. Read. As white as snow. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the whites of his eyes came with a red tint. You know what I'm saying? As you drink wine or you, as you age, the, the red of your eyes turn little red. I mean, the whites of your eyes turn red. So Jesus Christ, that's more of his description. Read on. And his feet. So he's looking at the tops of his feet. So I can see you, sister's feet. I know your color. I know you're not Caucasian looking or European eccentric. Right? So I know your color. But John the Revelator is seeing Jesus Christ's feet. And he's going to give a description of his color. Read. And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. So brass is a derivative of brown. So it's a form of brown. Let's see if it's like a, a light copper brown penny or what? Read that. As if they burn. As if it what? Burn. Burn right here is past tense. If something's burned, read. 
as if they burn in a furnace. So if you burn brown and it's burnt, what color is it? Black. You know, it is black. Right. Yeah. So Jesus Christ is what? Black. He is a black man. Yeah. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.